Have you ever gotten a health report and just stared at the numbers, the percentages, the risks? We hear about chances and odds all the time, but what do they actually mean? Well, today, we're going to pull back the curtain on probability. And I promise, this isn't going to be a scary math class. We're going to treat it as a powerful tool for understanding our own health. So, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with a scenario. Imagine you take a medical test, and it comes back positive. Your heart drops, right? The first thought is probably, well, that's it, I have it. But, is it really that simple? How certain can you be? This exact question is where understanding a little bit about probability becomes your personal superpower, and it's the question we're going to answer today. Now, before we can crack that nut, we need to get on the same page. We need to speak the language of chance. So we're going to quickly run through a few key ideas that will make everything else just click into place. First up is the word experiment. Now, in statistics, this doesn't mean you need a lab coat and safety goggles. An experiment is just any action that gives you a result. Testing a blood sample, that's an experiment. Taking someone's blood pressure, yep, that's an experiment too. It's just the thing you're doing or observing. So for every experiment, you have what's called a sample space. This is just a fancy term for a list of every single possible thing that could happen. It's the whole universe of potential results. For that HIV test, the sample space is super simple. The result can be positive or it can be negative. That's it. Every possibility is accounted for. And finally, we have an event. An event is the specific outcome we're actually interested in. Out of all the things that could happen in our sample space, the event is the one result we're focusing on. So, if we're testing a patient, the event we might care about is getting that positive result. Okay, with those three ideas in our back pocket, calculating probability becomes surprisingly simple. It's really just a fraction, like you see here. You take the number of ways your specific event can happen, and you divide it by the total number of all the possible outcomes. That's all it is, a simple but really powerful ratio. Let's make this concrete. Say there's a study of 100 pregnant women, and 20 of them tested positive for malaria. Our event is testing positive. So the probability of picking one woman at random from this group and her having malaria is just 20 divided by 100. That gives us 0.2 or 20%. And just like that, we've turned raw data into a meaningful chance. All right, so calculating the odds of one thing happening is pretty clear. But in the real world, especially in medicine, events aren't always in their own little bubbles. They're connected. One thing happening can affect the odds of something else. So, how do we deal with that? First, let's talk about events that are mutually exclusive. This is a key idea, and it's super simple. These are two things that absolutely cannot happen at the same time. A test result is positive or negative. It can't be both. A patient is in the treatment group or the control group. One outcome literally excludes the other. Now, this here is a really crucial distinction. On one side, you've got independent events. This is when one outcome has absolutely zero effect on another. For example, a mother having malaria doesn't change the odds of her newborn being a boy or a girl. They are completely unrelated. But then, on the other side, you have dependent events, and this is where things get really interesting in medicine. This is when one event does change the likelihood of another. Think about it. Things like smoking and lung cancer or family history and heart disease. Those events are deeply connected. So when we're dealing with those independent events, the ones that don't affect each other, we have a really handy tool called the multiplication rule. If you want to know the probability of two separate things, A and B, both happening, you just multiply their individual probabilities together. Let's use our examples to see how this works. The probability of a newborn being male is roughly 50-50, so we'll call that 0.5. And in our study, the probability of a mother having malaria was 0.2. Since those two things are totally independent, the probability of a mother having malaria and having a male child is just 0.5 times 0.2, which gives us 0.1, or a 10% chance. Okay, we've laid all the groundwork. We have our building blocks in place now. We can finally go back to that original burning question about the positive test result. And to do that, we need one last really powerful concept. And that concept is conditional probability. This right here is the key to everything. It's not about the probability of something happening out of the blue. It's the probability of it happening given that we already know something else is true. It's all about how the odds change when we get new information, like a test result. To really see this in action, let's look at some data. Here's a table from a study of 100 people looking at who has diabetes and who has hypertension. Now look closely. See the total number of people with hypertension? It's 25. And out of those 25 people, 15 of them also have diabetes. 
keep those two numbers, 25 and 15, in your head. So here is our conditional question. Given that we know a patient has hypertension, what's the probability they also have diabetes? Notice what happened. We're not looking at all 100 patients anymore. Our world just got a lot smaller. We're only looking at a specific slice. And the logic is actually pretty simple. Step one, we completely ignore everyone who doesn't have hypertension. Our new universe, our new total, is just those 25 people. Step two, we look inside that smaller group and find the ones we care about, the 15 who also have diabetes. And finally, step three, we do the math. It's just 15 divided by 25. And what do we get? 0.6, or 60%. Now stop and think about that. The overall chance of anyone in this entire group having diabetes was 40 out of 100, just 40%. But the moment we learned that a person had hypertension, the probability of also having diabetes jumped from 40% all the way up to 60%. That is conditional probability in action. It shows how one piece of information can completely change the awe. So you can see, this isn't just a classroom math exercise. Understanding these ideas is genuinely a lifesaver. Let's just zoom out for a second and look at the huge impact this has. You know, this quote really says it all. Probability is the bridge that takes us from just guessing to making smart, informed decisions based on actual evidence. It takes the hunch out of healthcare. And these ideas are absolutely everywhere. When doctors talk about your personal risk for a disease, that's probability. When scientists figure out how accurate a diagnostic test is, that's probability. Interpreting the results of a massive clinical trial for a new drug? You guessed it, it's all based on probability. From designing huge public health campaigns down to the decision you and your doctor make, this is the engine that powers modern medicine. So I'll leave you with this question to think about. The next time you hear a health statistic or you read about a new medical study, I want you to pause, think about what we've talked about. Ask yourself, what are the real odds here? Is this a conditional probability? What other information might change the numbers? Because now, you have the tools to look beyond the surface and truly understand what the odds are telling you.